I'm going to take and use my colored magnet wire. You can obtain this from qrpkits.com on the internet and it's real reasonable and it's a lot easier if you have the three different colors of wire when you're winding the trifiler transformers. It makes it a lot easier to keep the the windings separated correctly to where you can hook them up properly the first time. The first step I took was to unwind and trim off three four foot sections, one from each color of wire, and that should be more than enough to do our two transformers. I'm using the Amadon FT50-61 cores and reading the internet they say that for these transformers just about any core will work because the actual inductive reactance doesn't make much difference. What's important is the turns windings, the number of turns for the impedance transformation. For our trifiler transformers here they're one to one so it's not a problem to just take and wind three windings. So we've trimmed the wire and the next step is going to be to twist it. I've seen different rates of twisting anywhere from about 8 to 12 turns. We'll, we'll shoot for somewhere in around 10-12 turns but I don't think uh, the actual number of twists is overly important. My personal opinion. If I'm wrong somebody let me know. I've taken my three colors of wires a four foot section of each and I've just twisted the ends together to snug them up so that I can connect this end of it into a vise. I'm going to twist these with a variable speed power drill. I've got it chucked into the chuck and I just need to start it. I emphasize the fact that you need the variable speed to do this. Don't attempt this without having a variable. You can go clockwise, counterclockwise, it's your choice. I don't think the electrons will know the difference. I'm just keeping a snug tension on it. And I'll stop, take a look every now and then to make sure it's doing what I think it's doing. starting to get half a dozen turns or so it looks like up close to where I am. I don't think this is something I can stop at and restart once I take it out of the tools, so I'm going to just make sure I got enough right from the beginning. And it looks to me like it should be just fine the way it is. It appears like I may have underwound it, but I think from the ones I've done before, I've done that also. So I'm going to start with oh, a couple of feet, maybe the halfway point here, uh, pulled through. If I was brave I'd cut it in half, but I don't know exactly how many, how much this would take and I'd hate to end up being an inch short, so I'll work with the long tail winding it through the core. Each time you make a pass through the core, the center of the core is one turn. We want 13 turns, so there's one turn to start. And I'm going to just, just work the ends through and kind of lay them in and let them look good as we go. Try to space them out. I want to end up with a 20-30 degree spacing between the, the two ends when I'm all done. 
There's two turns. Want to pull it tight each on each turn so that it nestles down snug against the core. So you keep tension on it when you pull it so that it ends up tight. And I'm talking, I forgot the number of turns I've made, so I'll have to stop and count here in a little bit. There's one, two, three, four turns through there. I'm going to start winding them a little tighter together. Five. Pull it snug. Pull it tight as I bend it around again. Six. Push them together a little bit. Seven. Tail's getting shorter and easier to work with. Eight. Nine. Ten. Looks like I'm going to run out of space here. I need three more turns, so I'll tighten up what's on the core already. Eleven. Twelve. And our final turn, 13. So with this size core, two foot of wire was more than enough, so I've got about eight, nine inches left. But I'd rather have plenty left over than not have enough. And when we're all done, it looks like this. I get it out of the shadow of my hand. So now we're ready to trim the ends off and I'll show you a little trick I learned on uh, one of the websites. This is a little trick I learned on Doug's QRP Kits website. Is Once you get your transformer wound it'll tend to unwind. So if you just take some hot glue stick cut off a small amount. On his side he's gluing them right to the board. I'm going to just glue mine just to put it on the toroid itself so that it doesn't come unwound. So we take that little oh it's maybe an eighth inch piece of hot glue put it right on top of the toroid need to put it on a metal plate or something because glue is glue and it's going to glue, tend to try to glue to whatever you've got it sitting on. I'm going to take just a standard old heat gun. It's supposed to hold it straight over the top but if I hold it straight over the top you can't see what's going on. It's just starting to melt the glue. And it just takes some time you want to get the glue all melted to where it will flow down into the windings and set up there. That's a little more heat on this side and that should do it. Now I'm going to let it cool, cool it a little here. If I don't have it hot enough, I can come back and heat it again. I want to make sure I don't let it glue to the, the board or to the plate. We'll look at this side. 
This side didn't flow quite down all the way, so I'm going to heat it some more. I'm going to let it flow down in more. So turn it back on heat instead of cool. Got to get everything hot again. I have to keep my finger out because it is hot on the finger too. Okay, now it's melted all the way through. You can tell because it's starting to try to stick to the plate. So I'm going to pick it up and that's going to look like it's going to be okay. Now we just need to let it cool. And we want it to cool without sticking to the plate, so I'm going to see if I can't prop it up between a pencil leg there and on its own legs, and that should be fine there. And we'll go ahead and do the other one. We'll get the lead so that the wire is tight coming off of the toroid. You want to have everything spaced about the way you want it spaced. Put our glue dot on there and we'll do this one. So Doug on his side is is gluing them right to the board. Well I'm not ready to glue, take these to the board yet so I think this will work fine. It'll keep them from unwinding. once the glue set and should be a make them fairly permanent. The glue's going down through the hole in the center. We'll take a look. It's not all the way through yet. So we'll heat it a little more. I think that's fine. It's through to the other side, so. Prop it up so it'll dry. Here's a close up of the final product. I don't have a lot of glue on this side, but it is down the center. So the glue on this side is going to keep from doing anything. Here's the other one. So they're all set. I was looking with the ruler on my turns per inch and I'm way short. Seemed like I was way short on the last ones I wound also. on the turns per inch.